underdog best ball portion of the program here today. Underdog, I mentioned earlier, I'm just dipping my toes in on underdog, having a lot of fun. Use promo code RWMLB, by the way. Mentioned that earlier, but uh, definitely use that promo code RWMLB. We will match your first deposit up to 100 bucks, and uh, you get that free six-month RotoWire subscription. Todd, I was, you know, I'm a big season-long guy, but I feel like I've seen the future a little bit with this underdog format. Three outfielders, three infielders. Uh, Three pitchers, one util. So you don't have to worry about catchers. You don't have to worry about relief pitchers. I mean, catchers, catchers are believer infielders. Yeah. Yeah, So you do have to think about catchers, but you don't have to worry about filling catcher spots. Right. Right. Um, And you don't have to, obviously, this is best ball. So you don't have to worry about, um, you know, competing in the steals category. Steals are are worth a good chunk of points. Right. So it's nice to get some steals. Uh, but you don't need to compete in the category. So it really is a lot different than um, your standard Roto season-long league. It's a lot of fun. One thing I noticed right off the jump, outfielder madness, Todd. Absolutely crazy. I think the first seven or eight guys by ADP are outfielders in best ball, underdog best ball. And, you know, the first few drafts I did, I kind of went infielder and pitcher heavy, but shortly – Thereafter, I found out just how tough of a spot I'd be in with the outfield if I did that. Right. So I've only I've only signed up for one, and I'm you, you did them one sitting, bang them out, which is what I really want to do, and I will be doing. I'm only doing an eight hour draft, which is you know uh, um, that's all they really had. So I've only had two picks so far. I did the rankings according to the way I do point rankings. And there were a couple outfielders. I mean, but I, I mine were more balanced, at least my rankings. But I did find that the drafters went after outfielders pretty strong. Mm-hmm. And it's probably because they they realized that they're going to thin out pretty quickly. Um, what I'm going to do, and again, this is just, I'm just, what I see my likely strategy without having it being played out is... I've got two infielders to start. I think I'm going to get a pitcher next. So I may have more outfielders in reserve relative to infielders so that I have a better chance of an outfielder or two popping that week and jumping into my top three. You know what I mean? So I I may have weaker reserve infielders and saying, you know what, I drafted Matt Olson and I drafted who was Jose Ramirez. I you know these guys are my guys. I'm not gonna I don't I'm not gonna worry about backing them up, but my outfielders. So there's what there's ten starting lineup, and then you know ten so, bench spots. and then ten bench spots. So if I have, you know I don't know four pitchers, and then I'll probably go four outfielders and two infielders. I'm just guessing right off the top. That's kind of that's what I will do to try to make up for my early on uh, lack of quality of outfielders. I hear you. It is tough if you miss on some of those early. Like I was one of the first ones I did on underdog. I was picking at the, the uh, one, two turn. So at the wheel, Trey Turner was still there at 12. And I thought, man, I, I got to tra- take Trey Turner. And I did, but it gets to a certain point in the draft where you're, you're passing on some good pitchers, some good infielders to start filling those outfield spots. And I think it's, you know, you're sacrificing probably too much if you don't get at least, I don't know, three or four outfielders within the first 10 picks, honestly. Yeah. So, well, the other thing I need to do is my program considers the replacement level of infielders and outfielders to be the same. Hmm. I need to reprogram it to adjust. And maybe that will push outfielders up my ranking. So I, I will do that. that. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll, maybe that'll be my project tonight. Cause I get a spreadsheet where you plug in the point system and it ranks customized points. And that's where, you know, it came up fairly equally. What's, what's, what's going to be my conundrum. I've been kind of a anti Dylan C guy as far as Roto goes, but he's bubbling to near the top of my points rankings. Hmm. And he's him and Aaron Nola. I've got five picks left. 
and they're both really high up on my list. It's just not an outfielder anywhere close. So that's why I'm have to wait a third round, a third, another round for an outfielder. But I, you know, I may, I may be taking Dylan Cease after all my roto, after all my roto shade. He could be my first pitcher ever in underdog. Well, I, uh, you know, I am just dip, dipping my toes in, as I mentioned. I am brave, too. Brave yeah. new world for me. I'm really enjoying it though. But man, it, it just all these infielders especially with catchers getting lumped in, although Varsho, Dalton Varsho gets lumped in with the outfielders. But a guy like, you know, JT Realmuto is still sitting there. And granted, you don't need to fill up a catcher spot, but as an, even as an infielder, guy who's going 20-20 playing every day, I think he's a great value. But if you don't have outfielders yet, you're going to be passing on guys like Realmuto, Jose Miranda, I mean – Andres Jimenez, Ahmed Rosario, you're going to be passing a lot of good guys just to grab some outfielders. And I really, in my brief experience for drafts, I found it to be that outfield should be the number one priority. And that's how drafters with experience on underdog play. Right. Although I'll, I'll say that doesn't necessarily make it right. So That's true. The winner will probably be heavy infield. We <laughs> shall see. I don't know. Um, I, had, I had Jose Ramirez – is my number one ranked player, and it wasn't even close by the numbers. By For my best ball, yeah, but by, by, wow. by their scoring system. Mm-hmm. And so I, I took him fifth and was happy with it. And then I did, you know, Olsen, I wasn't looking for an infielder, but there wasn't any outfielders anywhere close. And I think I can get a pitcher next. So, you know, it, it, I, I'm hoping huh, that while everybody else is catching up on infield. I'm able to grab the outfielders that I need to at least be competitive. And I have kind of a disadvantage in that I'm I'm going to complete probably three, you know, sit and go drafts before I complete this one, you know, know? jump in the dinger. I highly recommend it. uh, The four I've done have all been the dinger. Okay. I've done. You can knock it out in like an hour. Hour and ten minutes. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean the thing, the, the difference is two different price, same idea, two different price yeah. ranges. So your t- yours is like the three dollar. I'm in the ten dollar one. Um, and I think, you know, we're going to be talking about this every week. Um, my first blush is, you know, we talk, you know, I, you know, I, multiple teams. This is designed to draft multiple. It, it, it's designed to. I'm bored. 10 bucks, three bucks. I'm going to draft another team. I've done it in an hour. That's, Mm. that's, I think that's the business model. And I think if you do that, I think you need to think about how you could frame each team. You know, I differentiate a little bit. Where I'm going at is you can't, I don't think you can stack completely, but I think on each team, you can have like a three offensive players from the same team by design. And, that you know, it, it's not going to crush you if they face a tough pitcher in a particular week because you still have other players to backfill their spots. But mm-hmm. the idea about stacking it's the same in DFS. <clears throat> you for every you know for an event, you get points you, for when a, when a teammate knocks in a teammate for that one event, you get points on two different players. So mm-hmm. it's 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 the number you know, so you 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 know you need fewer events to get more points. So I I'm guy and I went through and well the top 100 this team has six players this team has five I've identified the teams that I'm going to stack and I'm not going to go into draft stacking this team I'm, this time I'm stacking reds. I don't think I'm ever going to say that. But I drafted Matt Olson I have the the Braves down is one of my potential stacking teams. So later on, I will look to pick up two or three more Braves when they're at the top or near the top of my rankings. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. But I think there will be times where it may work out. Well, let me know how it goes if you go that infielder route early because, yeah, the, the outfield options get get questionable in a hurry. Even like Yoshida, your new guy with the Red Sox, he's getting 
heavily uh we should, I mean, heavy helium over there but that's going to do it for our yeah. underdog best ball segment as todd mentioned we are going to be talking best ball underdog best ball specifically every friday on the show use promo code rwmlb they will match your first deposit up to 100 bucks and you get that free six-month subscription to rotowire so 